Welcome to the lunch break coming to you from the Courier Mail newsroom. You can contact us on Twitter, hashtag the lunch break. If you have questions, comments, or just general banter about anything that we discussed today, let us know what you think. Joining us to talk about the Baden and Clay case is our police and courts editor, Alison Sandy. Al, thank you for coming on board again. Thank Seems you. like it's every day at the moment. Of course, the latest angle is that uh, Gerard is applying for bail this afternoon. What does that process involve? Oh, well, it's going to be quite interesting. Um, we're obviously waiting. It's 2.30. Um, he doesn't have to turn up. Um, basically, he's not requested to, but he can turn up if he wants to. My understanding, what I've been told, is that he hasn't, he doesn't want to turn up um, and won't be turning up. And as you would have uh, noticed, anyone who's been following this case, he doesn't seem to want to be in the limelight. So, um, yeah, the fact that he had his back to the public gallery last time, um, you know, it's no surprise that he's not going to, going to turn up today. Mm. Is it closed or is it open to the public and the media? And uh, the sort of duration, are we talking about an hour? Or is it short and sweet? Uh, look, who knows? Uh, this is, you know, how long is a piece of string? We'll find out, obviously. And and look, it, the, the media will be there and um, the, they'll probably, you know, it is open, open court. So um, we'll be there. But whether or not they try to suppress information or, you know, I mean, again, we're kind of, uh, it's every case is different, but we'll, uh, we'll find out when we get there. What are his chances of being granted bail? Look, we're told that they're slim, but not impossible. So um, certainly there are a lot of uh, things that the court or the judge will have to consider before making that decision. And that includes whether or not he's a flight risk, whether or not there's a danger um, that uh, witnesses could be corrupted or you know there's a fear that that could happen. Um, but also you've got his three daughters. Um, so um, there's so many different aspects of it, but uh, we'll certainly be bringing every step, everything that happens and um, we'll make sure that we get the information to you first. That's right. Continuing coverage right here, couriermail.com.au and, of course, in the print edition of Courier Mail. Now, uh, if he happens to lose bail or isn't granted <clears throat> it, what happens then? Well, he'll, um, he'll stay in the medical wing of Arthur Gorey Prison. I asked about that on, on what other you know, aspect that he'll have to undertake. So um, my understanding is because it's a bit different, because after if you lose bail, all of a sudden you've got to consider the, the prospect of of prison for a very long time. I mean, you've got the committal hearing, we're probably thinking a couple of months, and then um, the trial would be a couple of years. So, um, you know, if it all proceeds to plan. So, um, yeah, they'll have to do another assessment, medical, safety, um, mental health, and then um, and then you'd, you'd consider that after they've made that uh, analysis, they'll put him in the uh, three by four metre prison cell. Mm. Uh, we, uh, in, in your story, in today's Career Mail, and of course right here online, Gerard's family have appealed to friends and relatives for financial support in funding his legal defence. Now, what sort of costs are we talking here? Well, I mean, Olivia and Ian Walton, that's... Um, that is uh, Jared's sister and brother-in-law. Um, in this email, it said that um, they've got surety, um, the bail surety. So, um, should they have to put up a certain amount of money, that um, would include, that would in ensure that um, Jared Baden Clay didn't flee, or you know, that they'd, they'd have to uh, have that money lodged in Supreme Court before he could be released, so that they'd have it there as a guarantee. Um, but um, they're talking in there. They talked about having needing thirty thousand dollars by no later than yesterday, uh, five p.m. So, um, but the bail proceeding. Well, the bail hearing was always going to proceed unless there were like difficulties in the court, as far as we were aware. And um, yeah, we don't know whether they got that thirty thousand, but um, it is proceeding. And what's that email there, Al? When? How did you get your hands on that? And when? Oh well, I, 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 I obtained it yesterday afternoon. Mm. Um, it was sent out um, on uh, the. Tuesday, mm -hmm. the 19th of June. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it just talks about, um, you know, uh, the arrest and the charges and an appeal to friends and family to help them out. Um, obviously, it will be costly and mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, okay. it'll be interesting to see how that proceeds. But, you know, they have the details for their bank account to um, put the money in. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, they, uh, they there was another, you know, Jared needs and deserves the very best legal team to defend his innocence. Please help us to ensure that he receives every possible assistance to make certain that he is released on bail next Thursday and then to have these horrendous charges against him dropped at the committal hearing in the next
next few months so that he can continue to support his three daughters and attempt to rebuild his life and so that the police can then focus on identifying and bringing to justice the person who was actually, who was actually responsible for this terrible crime. Mm. Uh, it, is a, it is a tough time for all, of course. Uh, you mentioned the costs and that they're appealing for financial support. Uh, what's the background on Gerard's legal team? Oh, look, we have Peter Davis, who's the prosecutor, uh, sorry, the defence um, barrister, um, and then we have um, Dar Darren Marnie, who's the solicitor, a top criminal Gold Coast lawyer, um, and he's been working through this. Um, he was uh, hired quite early on, um, and then Peter Davis a little bit later. So they're the team. Um, Peter Davis, again, respected SC. Um, he uh, is, you know, I mean, they've got the best, basically. He's yeah. got the best. So, um, you know, it will be interesting to see how this proceeds. All right, and what about the prosecutor? Uh, the prosecutor, Danny Boyle. Um, so, yeah, the DPP, again, you know, very respected, very good. Um, you know, it's it's going to be, you know, the two, I guess it's it's the equivalent of the two best prize fighters going head to head. So it's, it's going to be an interesting time and, uh, you know, we just can't wait to see what happens at the bail application hearing. Because the other thing is, um, we're hoping and, and what we're expecting that some information about the actual alleged crime will be revealed. So, um, you know, and uh, we're very keen to uh, get more information, as is everybody else, I'm sure. Because that's one of the questions that remains, is how was Alison murdered, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, the alleged murder. So um, it's whether or not, you know, I mean, the cause of death hasn't been revealed and we're not sure whether it it will be revealed, but um, there is a good chance we'll at least get a few more details, a few more pieces to the puzzle this afternoon. Mm. Al, you've been following this case, as I mentioned, from the very beginning, and you have, uh, you've mentioned that, uh, and it's obvious that Gerard's appearance, physical appearance, has changed over that time. Um, the latest is that he has, of course, shaved off his beard. Why is that? Um, that was a court order. Um, they had to shave off his beard for more forensic tests. So, um, and we're not quite sure what the, um, that's something that we'll have to follow up what, where they're at with those forensic tests. Um, so far they've been, um, you know, keeping all the information from this, um, from this examination, a lot of the murder investigation close to their chest. So it'll be interesting to see whether any more information is revealed. So he is clean shaven now. He has uh, shaved that off um, in compliance with the court order. Mm. All right, uh, in the meantime, uh, of course, we do await uh, the bail application this afternoon and we will have full coverage right here, couriermail.com.au and in tomorrow's print edition of the Courier Mail. In the meantime, donations can be made to the late Alison Baden Clay Children Appeal. We have all the details right here on our website and there's a fundraiser on Sunday. Yes, there is a Cricket Day fundraiser organised by the, the uh, Brookfield United um, Cricket Club and with the SES and uh, other, uh, uh, I guess, authorities that helped with the search. Um, so it's going to be, you know, they've got some wonderful prizes, um, the raffle and the fundraising and the community is really banded together. You know, um, the, the, obviously the children of the late Alison Baden Clay, they're just obviously very, very upset by um, what has happened and they are there for the whole family, the Dickies especially as well, um, Alison's parents, um, Priscilla and Jeff Dickey, mm -hmm. and um, her sister um, uh, Vanessa and Ashley, the brother. So everybody's banded together, best friend uh, Kerry Ann Walker as well. They're just amazing, you know, the way that they've held up and the, you know, the strength that they're giving and everything they're doing for the daughters. Of course, details uh, for that appeal are on our screen right now. So uh, please donate and, uh, and support those three girls.